It's on your nose. Clap your hands, everybody. If you got what it takes, because I'm Marisha Snow, and I want you to know that these are the caves. <laughs> kick it up, kick it up, kick it up, kick it down. <laughs> Hey Cake Nisas, it's Marisha. I have on my couture and a cupcake t-shirt. Marisha'sCoutureCakes.com, that's the blog you guys. This video is dedicated to all of you queens. Hold on. <laughs> this video is dedicated to all of you queens out there. This cake is actually kind of trendy. This is like a queen cake. So what's cool about this cake style is that you can make the face on the cake look like the person that you're giving it to. Then you can also get an edible print made from your local supermarket or cake decorating store and then just build the hair with buttercream. It's really, really cool. So if you haven't seen this style of cake, just look up either Afro cake or queen cake and you will see a whole bunch of different styles. So if you haven't done so yet, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. <laughs> Press on the notification yo nay bell, and then let's get started. Okay, you guys, I'm gonna be starting off with my fondant crown, and this has to actually set overnight or longer. I actually had to make this cake overnight for the next day. I've never used Tylos powder. Can you believe it? I have yet to buy it. So I went ahead and did some cornstarch. That pretty much dries out the fondant also. And I'm using this canister to act as a mold for my fondant crown. So I just put some parchment paper around there and taped it. Now that I have my fondant rolled out, I'm going to go ahead and just trim the sides and the bottom. And then I'm going to use a bowl to cut out the curved part of the crown. And now I have a gum paste and fondant mold that I actually purchased off of Amazon. It was a great price. You can get any type of mold. You just want to make sure that it has an assortment of different shapes that you can make from the mold. I literally just did probably two or three of everything that's in that fondant mold. And then I went ahead and placed it onto the crown how I saw fit and then applied it with water and after that I'm using my favorite gold luster dust the Rolkin brand is amazing it actually goes on better dry in my opinion and so I put that onto my parchment and my canister and I'm going to let that harden overnight You know I'm always down for the theatrics, so I definitely was wishing that I had a crown. Even if I had went to Burger King or something and just got a crown and wanted to come in singing, She's your queen to be. Anyway, I try to give you guys the best of me and sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. So this is my favorite part of the process because I get to stop and draw and I absolutely love to draw. I'm not the best drawer in the world, you know what I'm saying? But this is, you know, I get the job done. So I'm actually looking at the picture of the woman who I'm trying to make the cake look like. And I'm just taking the most prominent features that I see on her face and pretty much drawing that out. Nothing crazy crazy because, you know, I'm not trying to make it look like twinsies you know but just something to where when she looks at it she sees herself in little ways her eyes went down in the inner corner her nose was somewhat wide with a strong bridge her eyebrows were straight across with a nice arch at the end I was like okay I see you girl and then you know her lips had a really nice shape to them so I went ahead and drew that out she also did a side part and a bang which was perfect for this cake and then I went ahead and gave her that little baby shoulder I don't know why I made her arm so small but when you know it's on the cake it doesn't look as creepy as it does it really looks very strange but that's the drawing and we're gonna work with it <laughs> so 
Now that I have the drawing complete, I put that on some brown flesh colored fondant that was as close to her complexion as I could get it. And I went and just indented the drawing onto the fondant using my X-Acto knife. This would be so much easier with a toothpick. I just couldn't find one. And once I have that indented, I'm going to use a brown edible marker and I'm going to go ahead and draw in the face. Give it a little bit of shadowing as well to make it look realistic. And then the lips are literally my favorite part because it really makes it look just so amazing. You're going to make the lips out of fondant. So as you can see, I just used three pieces and I just pushed them together. And then to make the lips look all nice and plump, you can just add in some lines and detail. I also love to look at the makeup style that the person wears. If they don't wear makeup generally, then you'll just do the lash and just a neutral lip. If they love makeup, then you could do a red lip, purple eyeshadow, just make it funky. I wanted to make her eyeshadow match the cake, just like complete golden goddess. So I put in some of that luster dust on the eye. And then I went in with a little bit of black gel dye and made those lashes. I noticed in her picture that her lashes are a little bit wispy and they also stop in the center, which was so gorgeous. So I wanted to draw that onto the fondant as well. And then I'm going to draw in that fabulously arched eyebrow. Now this is the cake. It's just frosted with white buttercream. I'm going to wet it just a little bit because it was refrigerated so it's pretty hard. And then I can apply my fondant face and press it carefully. And the ink has completely dried. It's only been about 30 minutes. And now I'm going to take some black buttercream with a large star tip and I'm just going to start to pipe her hair. So this style is like a nice little swoop bang in the front and then not too curly but not too straight. Just really pretty. Like I've definitely asked for this style when I've gone to the hairdresser a few times. I want to make it look nice and thick. Do about half of the cake with the hair. Like this is so pretty and see that little baby shoulder isn't even as like creepy looking anymore. So once that is done, refrigerate your cake and then make sure that your crown is completely hardened and you can add it to the top and everything just comes together so beautifully. You can also add a piece of ribbon as border that could go under her arm. And that is it. Take this cake, walk down the street with the crown on, and tell everyone that you are a queen with a queen that you're going to eat soon. <laughs> Couture and a gorgeous queen cake. Bye, guys. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. You guys are all queens. I hope that you guys know that. Visit me on my fan page at facebook.com slash Mauritius Couture Cakes. Write to me sending your pictures. I love it when you guys do that. Tag me on Instagram at Mauritius underscore Couture or just message me saying, hey girl, what are you doing? I'm gonna be like nothing. Just in here making this cake or playing a game because I'm a serious gamer. And if you need any of the recipes for any of these videos, check MauritiusCoutureCakes.com. Let's pick a cake nista coming. Okay. The cake needs to comment of the day goes to Baby Apple 83 who comments, love the cake, how far have you traveled to deliver? 
So, she actually wrote this on the unicorn dessert table video that I did. And in that video, I go from Delaware to Pennsylvania, up near Dutch country. That was the furthest that I've ever traveled for a cake. That's about 100 bit of miles. And that was for a family member, so, I mean, unless you're ready to uh, front up some gas money. You know what I'm saying? Some delivery fee. When it's that far, that delivery could be more than the cake. Nobody really wants to do all that. People have asked me to go to New York. I can't imagine traveling with my cakes through New York because every second, once you get into Manhattan, it feels like a car accident just waiting to happen. I will see you guys soon. Bye, Cake Nistas. Mm -hmm.